Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friend, No Way. In this video, we need to look at the facts of the world is black and white. There is only right and wrong. There is only up and down. There is only male and female. This is how God created this earth. There is a positive and a negative. Now, back in, for many of you that can think back that far and still remember back, for those of you around my age, late 70s, early 80s, I'm going through the end of middle school and coming into high school and more so in my ending of high school in the early 80s. There was no black and white allowed anymore. Everything had to be relative. Meaning, okay, punching this person in the mouth is wrong. Well, are you sure it's wrong? Let's take a look at it and let's analyze it. Well, there is no analyzing it. If somebody calls you a name and you walk up and punch them in the mouth, well, then you're in the wrong. If you don't have a thick enough skin to walk away and you get triggered over being called a name and you lash out in violence, then you're wrong. There is no in-between. There is no, here, let's look at this logically. But that's what they created. They wanted you to question reality. Now let's fast forward all the way to now, to 2022, and what is the biggest problem we have in society? Is nobody believes nothing anymore. But what they do believe is easy for them to see as logical. When it's illogical. When everything is being questioned. And now people are hating each other because, well, the sky is blue. Well, no, the sky is aqua blue. Well, you're an idiot. Well, no, you're an idiot. Well, you don't see. You're blind. Even when it comes to believing in what the Bible says today, people are arguing and fighting and destroying each other over what their interpretation of the Bible is. The Bible is real cut and dry. I've said it before in, in other videos of the past of it, it doesn't matter that things are changing and words are changing. There's certain, certain meanings behind it. For those that would stop listening to all these people on YouTube and Rumble and BitChute and start thinking for yourself, you could understand that God mentions in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, God mentions many times and had John see these visions and word it the way it was inspired by God to be worded and to bring forth this message that there will be signs from the heavens in these end times. Satan, evil, the beast system. Let's look at what, what has man created. The Bible doesn't say it. The Bible doesn't even, the only thing the Bible explains is the beast. So, for all these people that are the Antichrist, the Antichrist, they're looking for this one specific person that is the Antichrist. This is the Antichrist. There is only one out of the beast system that was mentioned as a singular person. And that is the second beast, the false prophet. The beast system 
is what we see today within every government around the world. We are going to destroy our economies. We are going to destroy the people. Just like it was in the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia back in the in the nineteen twenties and and the nineteen the teens of the nineteen hundreds. What did they do? Once they started getting the people under control, the last thing they had to do was destroy the farming and destroy the independent farmer. So now we can starve the people into submission. And it's happening right here before, before us, right before your eyes, every single day. You can see that our own very government, from the state to the federal government, is doing what? They are destroying this economy. They are destroying supply chains. They are destroying crops. They are destroying everything. And they blame it on everything else. But what are the people more concerned about arguing about? What somebody has to say. I saw this online and look what this, oh, this person is so good, this person. Right. But every single one of those people that you just fall right over and listen to and hang on every single word they say, take a look in the description below their videos. Take a look at their sites on Rumble, Bitshoe, Brighteon, um, Odyssey, all of it, YouTube. Take a look at it. Become a Patreon. Support me. Buy this stuff from my sponsor. You are supporting them. So they are going to tell you just what they want you to hear. So you continue to support them. Because most of these people are people that cannot make it in the real world. They never could. But they want you to question your own reality. And what does that remind me of? That reminds me of a lot of the churches today. They do the same thing. They tell you what you want to hear. If it's right or wrong. They will just continue to feed your itchy ears. So you go to that church every single week and you hand over your hard-earned money. And a lot of people are handing over money they can't afford. Why? Because there's some sweet-talking pastor standing there saying, Oh, it will be returned to you tenfold. Well, let's look at the Catholic Church. What's the Catholic Church tell you? You have to buy your way into heaven. But what's the Bible teach? No man can buy his way into heaven. But this is what we're seeing. So when it comes down to wineskins disappearing, literally, and I know, I've done a whole uh, show on it about wineskins and what wineskins ones, and I even showed it and read the verses right on my podcast 10 years ago and showed people and, and explained it to people about being born again and being made anew. That was the meaning behind a lot of the the wineskins when it was talking of it. And even in Daniel, when Daniel, you know, fill you up and you you would burst like an old wineskin. This is why when they put wine into a wine skin which was an animal hide. The outside, as you're using the wine, well, it's it's drying out and and it's getting weak, and it also it's getting some of the wine residues and stuff inside it. Okay, so you don't put wine in an old wine skin. Chances are, it's just going to burst anyway. It's no longer going to be able to hold that liquid inside and it'll all be wasted. And then later on in the New Testament, it's talking wineskins and it's talking about being born again and being made anew. You cannot take the old you into the new you for if you bring the old you and you're getting saved 
and you say you're being born again and you're being saved and you're giving your, yourself to Christ and you're going to follow Christ and you're going to follow God, you have to be born again. You have to be made anew. Like, you do not put new wine in an old wine skin. You cannot put the new you in the old you because it won't work. You will bring your old ways with you. But it has changed. It says bottles. So why does it say bottles? Well, to me, God is telling me that we are at that point in time of the seven letters to the seven churches that are the first three chapters of the book of Revelation where we are being warned that the churches themselves will be the ones letting the people down, will be the ones condemning the Christian souls because they are being led astray. They are being taught falsehoods. They are being asked to worship things that God does not approve of. And it's being done through the church. So, what do we have today when it comes to bottles? Well, people are going to church on Sunday and they're getting rinsed out and they're getting their, their bottle filled back up and it's wasted all week long. Because when they walk out of the church, there it stays. Oh, but the church is happy. Why is the church happy? It's because you took the money that you don't have and you gave it to that church. And that pastor and that leadership, and they're sitting back and they're just cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. And telling you what you want to hear. So week after week, all it is, God is telling me that this is the point in time that we are at. That people are not being saved properly. People are not being taught from the church properly. We are in the falling away. The falling away is not when people stop going to church. That is part of it. But a big part of it is they are going to church and they are no longer getting the truth. They are no longer being shown the absolute truth of God. They are not being taught the true gospel of Jesus Christ. They are not, they're not being shown anything anymore except for what they want to hear so they continue. So this is where we're at in this point in time. Another big thing people carry on about the lion and the lamb. Yes, it used to say the lion and the lamb. But we don't need to argue and fight with people. We need to tell the people, well, that's a warning from God. Because now who is dwelling with the kids? The children. Who is now dwelling with? with our youth is it the lion of judah which is christ lying down with the lamb of god which is also christ oh no we now have the wolf is dwelling amongst the kids and why is that Look at our public school systems. Look at many of the parents out there today. Look at what they believe in and look at what they're following and look at what they're doing to their own children. Don't you think that it, it's kind of suspicious that here a year ago, if you were unexperimented on, your name, your address, your face, everything. They wanted everybody to know who you were. But now that things have gone bad, oh no, we cannot disclose that information about these people that are now permanently disabled, those people that have now passed away, those people that are constantly filling up our hospitals their status of being experimented on all for privacy reasons we cannot divulge that information so do you understand do you now see your neighbors not the problem the people your neighbor your neighbor 
continues to vote for and support, they're the problem. This is why these people that just cannot see reality for... It is reality. Reality is not changing. Reality never changes. It is your perspective of reality that changes. And that's all done by suggestive thought. Somebody says something. Oh, well, that explains it. Reality's shifting. No, reality's not shifting. Your perspective of reality is shifting. And if you would stop listening to other people and start listening to yourself, then you would see that reality's not shifting. Your perspective of it is. What you're believing to be true is false. What you're believing is happening is not happening. Look at the, the people out there that have thousands and thousands of followers and fans and subs on all of these platforms. And they, oh, don't listen to Hollywood and beware of Hollywood. But yet the very thing they're talking about is, oh, the Matrix. They're even suggesting now, oh, that we're already living in a matrix. We're already living in a pod and everything around us is fake and computer generated. And we just don't know that yet. And oh, the world is bigger than what the world they claim the world. See? So you see this subjective thought so that your reality no longer exists in your mind. It's only what they tell you. And what's the next thing out of their mouth? Help me continue to push this message to the, to the people. Join my channel. S support my channel through my Patreon, my Subscribestar. Oh, and my sponsor of today's video is... See? And it goes on and on. These are people you go out and you work your tail off. Or many people today, they work hard at, at going down to the, the store with their EBT card and they live off in other people that are working, but that's beside the point. But they're all, they're supporting all these people. And as long as these people can continue to make $150,000, $200,000 a year, do you think they're going to stop? Do you really think they're going to say, wait a minute, guys? We need to look at the truth of this. Or are they going to suggest maybe this could be? Who knows? When I tell you something about the Bible, I'm saying this is what the Bible says. And I don't care what these other people think because words have changed or this have changed. I can interpret the Bible for myself and I can see that the world is black and white just like God is. If you truly know God and have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you will know that their understanding of everything is black and white. It is either righteous or it is sinful. There is no in-between. There is no, oh, well, my sin's not that bad. Well, yes, it is. Any sin is bad. Something as simple as looking over at this guy or this girl over here and, ooh, look at that girl. Oh, she's gorgeous. Wow. And you've already undressed her and had, had sex with her five times before she's gone out of sight. Oh, but that sin's not as bad as, well, this, this guy was a murderer. Hello? Sin is sin. It is black and it is white. God sees this world as right or wrong. Your actions are either righteous or they are sinful. There is no in-between. So anybody that's trying to tell you, like the, the churches today, the, the greatest thing the church has pushed today, and, and it makes me sick, they tell you the first half. But they don't tell you the second half. 
well, you know, Jesus died for you, and Jesus is your Savior, and you're, you can go to heaven, and you'll be good to go. Just believe in Christ, you know, so your sins will be forgiven. What they're not telling you is the way to have your sins forgiven is, number one, you must repent. You must turn from that. When, when you're about to sin, and you know that it's a sin, and you know God is not going to like it, it's what God pleases God and pleases the Son, Jesus Christ, is you fight that temptation. And when you see that attractive girl, you turn your eyes and you put your mind on something else other than her beauty. Or for you women, this guy, oh, look at his muscles, and oh, he's so handsome, and he's so intelligent, and, and you've already, you've already stripped him down ten times before he's gotten out of your sight. No, you turn from that temptation. That is what God sees. That is what pleases Christ. That is what lets Christ know you are truly repenting of your ways. You, you're going to tell a lie to get yourself out of trouble and you stop and you tell the truth and you take the punishment. That is what pleases God and pleases Christ. You see, that's how the world is. So if you don't stop looking at these people today that are leading you astray, what you see with your eyes is real. Don't let them tell you it's not. Why is every leaf on a tree perfect? Because God is perfect. Why is everything symmetrical? Because God has created it that way created it that way there is a side and there's an opposite and there is up and there is down there is right and there is wrong the world is black and white and this is why it is so easily done by the propaganda in the media and by you know look at well I'm a doctor and I'm the healthcare professional and you have to listen to me because I'm a professional. While well, all this time his hands behind his back and big pharma and government sitting there patting that hand right full of money. Come on, come on, read that teleprompter. Tell them people what we want you to say. And he laughs all the way to the bank. And it's because back in the 70s into the 80s they started convincing the people that the world is not black and white but everything is relative and everything is not relative so we come to the point today where people cannot even determine anymore what is right or what is wrong they can't even interpret the Bible properly anymore because they have to sit there and argue and debate and then end up hating each other because one believes in one thing and one believes another. And now you have the people out there also saying, oh, you can't even believe the Bible anymore. Really? You can't even believe the Bible anymore? No, I will believe the Bible. And as for the changes, I am going to see those changes as God filling me in and letting me know what is right and what is wrong and where we are at for the signs of the end time. God told us in the end there shall be signs. Even the beast system, the false prophet, they will show you signs and wonders as even to if at all possible, deceive the very elect. And who are the very elect? Those that choose to follow Christ, they have elected through their free will to follow Christ.
And now we're seeing them being deceived. And it's not just by man or evil or pagans or heathens or, or any. It's by the church itself. We see it. It's everywhere. Very few people are left. And it is funny. I. This is not my saying. It was something that I saw, I think, eight, nine years ago. A person had, had mentioned it, and I liked it, and I've used it. There's a good reason why we have a highway to hell and a stairway to heaven. For that road to righteousness and salvation and everlasting life is the road less traveled. I mean, I even see people now saying, the gate is narrow. No, the gate is not narrow. Oh, well, that's a Mel uh, Mandela effect for me. Uh, no, now you're leading people astray because you, you don't even know the true meaning of it. Many people will come to Christ. Many people will enter that gate. But few people shall find the path, the true path, to everlasting life, for that path is narrow. And I understand, and there's this person that has started following me, and this person always mentions in the comments how hard it is for them to be righteous. But you know, that person is more righteous than somebody that says they are. Because that person can see their wrongdoings and they understand their wrongdoings and they strive to do better. And you know something? That's all God and Christ has ever asked of us. To know and feel guilty and hurt inside. That, well, I did this wrong. Sorry, God. I, I'll try better next time. I really will. But see, it's that guilt that's in your heart that God sees. And that Christ can see. Because nobody on this earth, I don't care what anybody on this earth, nobody at all thinks of me, good or bad. Because the only person the only entity of this whole existence called earth that I am out to please is Jesus Christ. Because if it was up to God, as it states in Romans, nobody, nobody is worthy of heaven. So what did God do? Because no human being alive or that has died throughout the history, the complete history from when God created Adam and Eve on, nobody, but nobody, is worthy. So God has put Christ, his son, his only begotten son, in charge. So we must know Christ. We must understand that it is Jesus, the Son of God, that we must please. And we must have that relationship with if we have any chance of reigning with Him in the end, in heaven. That's it. So think really hard, ladies and gentlemen. The next time people want you to see things in a different light, remember, the world is black and white. It is right or it is wrong. There is no in-between. It is up or it is down. It is right or it is left. It is in or it is out. There's only two sides. Even when you look at any story, 
There's only two sides to every story out there. Every crime, there are two sides. There is what the criminal is telling you, and there is the truth. That's it. There is no wiggle room in between because that's what our court system has done today is they want people to see the wiggle room in between there is no wiggle room you loaded the gun you pointed it at a person and you pulled the trigger simple done murder there is no wiggle room you committed the crime Oh, he said he called me bad names. Oh, he called me bad names. He insulted me with words. So you killed him. Okay? There's the wiggle room they want. Look at what they are allowing in our society today. They want us killing each other. Come on, people. Stop. We need to start holding those that are causing this and creating this accountable. Stop selling out mankind for a buck, for a dollar. Because don't you know that when those in charge are done using you, they've now poisoned you, they have now destroyed you, they will throw you away. When they use you to the point to take over a certain demographic or group of people, when they're done with you, you will be thrown away just like those people you helped destroy. It's coming. What is coming within the next few months Everything is on hold right now, ladies and gentlemen, because the midterm elections. And when it's over, hang on. Because there will not be anything left. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is no way. Out. <laughs>